finally I'm here, Skuga Farm. This building houses a classic car collection, classic British cars. Anthony McDonald, the owner of Skuga Farm, he's a collector of British cars. When he opened this farm last April, he brought all the cars together in his collection, or some of them, built a building, put them on display for the public. So I thought, I need to come and look at this. Six months I've been waiting to come, but I was in Chiang Mai, so I thought, right, I'm gonna come and have a look at his collection. So this is it, eight cars, one motorcycle and sidecar, all British, all individual, all epic, and all very, very rare in Thailand. We got two MGs on this side. We got a Royal Enfield motorcycle and sidecar with a completely bespoke sidecar. More MGs on the end, a real classic. We got a Sprite, got a Spitfire, a Westfield, an early defender and tucked behind the early defender is an A35. So all very interesting, all very individual. What I want to do is I want to go straight over to Anthony to talk me through the cars, explain each one, explain the details, what the backstory is, what they're all about. Hi, I'm Anthony McDonald and today we're at uh, the Skuga Farm, uh, which I'm the owner of. Uh, on the farm, uh, I also keep my collection of uh, British classic cars. So today, um, I'd like to show you around the collection. I have about 10 cars in the garage at the moment uh, and uh, show you what I've been able to collect over the years. So this car is a, a 1967 a Triumph a GT6. So uh, it's the hardtop version of the Spitfire range. So it's quite a rare car. Uh, I bought this car in Chiang Mai actually. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape. Uh, so it took two years to do the full restoration. So uh, completely new interior, new dash. Uh, tried to convert a lot of the car back to original because uh, a lot of Japanese parts had been fitted uh, over the years. Um, and then of course redid all of the paintwork uh, and chose this classic sort of British livery, uh, which is the British racing green with yellow, uh, which was the racing colors uh, of the day. Um, so it's a very nice car, very comfortable car, small car. Um, some people say it's like the uh, poor man's E-type Jaguar, um, but uh, it does get a lot of uh, admiration. Okay, so this one is the classic British Roadster, is the MGB, uh, but not the Roadster version, it's the hardtop version, so it's the MGB GT. Uh, this is a 1973. Uh, it's a great touring car, uh, it has a 1.8 litre uh, all original engine and gearbox drives very well. I fitted air conditioning to this car um, and done restoration. It was largely original, um, so there wasn't too much work involved. But it's a great car when we want to tour up country, uh, into province, that sort of thing. Runs very well, um, so it's a it's a great car to have as a, almost an everyday classic car. Uh, this car is a uh, Westfield. Uh, Super 7 uh, replica, so it uh, comes from the UK, uh, based on the original 1960s Lotus Super 7 design. Uh, this car is fitted with a 2 litre Ford engine, uh, 150 horsepower, but because the power to weight is very good, the performance is exceptional. The car itself only weighs 600 kilograms, um, so it's an extremely fun car and a great car for the track. Uh, this car is one of the newer classic cars in the collection. Uh, it's a 1979 Triumph Spitfire 1500. Um, it's uh, a very nice car to drive. Uh, it's fitted with a 1.5 litre engine. It's fully original, uh, original engine gearbox, everything. Uh, I was very lucky I bought this car in Bangkok uh, and it was pretty well in original condition when I bought it. We did a very light restoration on it uh, over six months, changing you know all the, the rubber parts and this sort of thing and a little bit of the interior seating. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the car is as you see it. Uh, it's a beautiful car uh, and has the classic Triumph Spitfire lines, which everyone seems to love. Uh, it's a convertible, but I did fit the air conditioning to this car as well. So it's a very usable car uh, and performance is very good with the overdrive gearbox giving you the five speeds. So uh, this motorcycle is the only one I have in the collection. Uh, is a Royal Enfield Classic 500. Uh, the bike's only five years old, but the classic styling gives it a retro look. Um, I'd always wanted one with a sidecar, so I designed a sidecar and had a local Chiang Mai 
uh, motorcycle shop custom make it for us. Uh, and then after, of course, the sidecar was finished, we repainted everything to match. Um, so it's a, quite a unique looking uh, motorcycle and sidecar. So um, it's nice just to have one bike in the collection. We do get a lot of bike lovers come to the garage. So uh, they always appreciate seeing this one. Uh, this car was the, the first car, uh, classic car that I bought in Thailand. Uh, it's an Austin Healey Frog Eye Sprite uh, Mark I. Uh, it's a 1960s. Uh, it's very, very rare. There's only two that I know of in Thailand, um, but drives exceptionally well. Uh, it's a great fun car. Uh, I've had it several times out on the track at classic car events. Uh, one of them was the Asian Le Mans series held in Buriram. So it was, I bought this car in Supanburi from an expat owner uh, who did a lot of the restoration work on it. So I haven't had to do really much to this car at all since I bought it. Uh, about eight years ago. Uh, this car is actually a, a replica, it's a, what I call <laughs> garage art, uh, so it's not running, but uh, I had the opportunity to buy this. It's a replica of a Morgan, which is a UK brand. Uniquely, it's a three-wheeler with the two wheels at the front and one at the back. Uh, it was made by a, a British uh, person based in Chiang Mai, um, and I had the opportunity to buy it from him and, and display it in the garage. Uh, it's a classic design of the original Morgan. Uh, actually has a, a Citroen 2CV engine fitted to it. Uh, and it's just like a great looking car to, to have in the garage. Uh, this car is one of two Land Rovers I have in the collection. Uh, it's a Series 2A, uh, 1966. Uh, fully restored and all original. So it has the original engine in it, uh, which in the case, this case is actually a petrol engine and gearbox. Uh, it's the short wheelbase version, which is uh, extremely rare um, in the station wagon configuration. So um, it's, a, it's a great car and uh, a lot of people are classic Land Rover lovers um, and they really appreciate to, to see the car in this sort of condition and still be fully original, which is quite rare. This one, not quite the sports car uh, in the garage. This is a Austin A35 uh, van. I uh, had the opportunity, I bought this in Bangkok a few years back, uh, pretty well in all original condition, uh, which was great. Uh, we did the stickering for it and use it as a chocolate delivery van, which is very cute. So sometimes we park it out next to the chocolate factory as well. Uh, but it's a very nice car. It's 1960s, uh, only has a 950cc engine, uh, but goes along quite well, uh, very reliable. Um, so uh, a, ni a nice car to have um, and for people surprisingly really like it. Uh, some old older generation customers have told me this was actually the taxi in Bangkok uh, before the taxis started to use Japanese cars. So back in the 1960s, uh, you would have seen this operating as a, a taxi in Bangkok. Uh, this car is a 1951 MGTD. It has fully original engine gearbox. Uh, luckily, the previous owner had not driven the car for 20 years, so it more or less stayed in original condition. Uh, it did need restoration, um, which took about two and a half, almost three years to do. Um, the restoration work was done in Chiang Mai, even though I bought the car from Bangkok. It's an absolutely beautiful car, drives exceptionally well. Um, I bought this car because my father uh, had an MGTD when he was in his mid-20s uh, and I'd always looked out for one and I had the opportunity to buy it uh, and I couldn't turn it back. So this is uh, a car that I really love uh, for many reasons, particularly sentimental reasons because it reminds me of my father. So one of the big features that everyone loves in the Skuga garage is our slot car track. So I think particularly all of the Westerners, we've always had scale electrics as kids um, this one is actually Carrera, which is the German uh, brand. Um, I chose the Carrera because it has stainless steel track, um, so we don't have issues with rust and things like that. So basically I decided how big the table would be, uh, and then use the computer program to design the track layout, and then you buy piece by piece. And it took you know, six months uh, to assemble it and do all the landscaping, uh, build all the buildings, you know, buying bits and pieces from different places. So it's something really great. The kids love it. You know, a lot of uh, younger children have never seen this type of thing. 
Um, so it's nice, we usually have it running during the day so people can see the cars going around. Uh, occasionally we will have racing on it as well where we can race up to six cars. Uh, very high tech, all Bluetooth, Wi-Fi connected with the iPad and the tablet and everything. So it's, uh, it's just a really nice sort of big boy toy uh, to have in the garage. Uh, so this is uh, my private office in the garage, uh, basically my little uh, haven. Uh, so I have a collection of my model cars here that I've been collecting you know, for 20, 30 years. Uh, but importantly, it's where I keep all my spare parts, uh, manuals and workshop manuals and reference books for all of the cars because I do like to do some of the basic maintenance work myself. So it's always great to have a library of books uh, about each of the cars. Thank you.